Okay. I'm going to make a video that's going to cover everything that we have done this week. Um, this week we started unit 4A. Uh, we started talking about circles. So, so far in unit 4A, Monday, February 22nd, we talked about basic vocabulary. This was our intro to circles. Tuesday, February 23rd, we talked about arcs and chords. Wednesday, we talked about inscribed angles. And Thursday, we talked about some other angle relationships. So I'd like to kind of review everything that we have talked about this week. That way it's nice and organized for you in case you weren't here or in case some of this stuff didn't make sense to you the first time around. Okay, so the first day we talked about some basic vocabulary and you had to do a pretest in Canvas. Uh, it wasn't too hard, but maybe you don't know some of these terms. Okay, so first term I wanna look at, a chord looks like this. It's a segment whose endpoints are on the circle. Now a diameter is also a chord. Okay. The diameter is the longest chord. This, so a chord is a segment. This is called a secant. A secant is kind of like a chord, but a secant is an actual line. It intersects the circle in two points. And a tangent is a line in the plane of a circle that intersects the circle in exactly one point. That point is called the point of tangency. Okay. And then, sorry, I got ahead of myself. I forgot this slide. So a circle, in case you didn't know, is a set of all points in a plane that are equidistant from a given point called the center. Circle P, or you can kind of shorthand it, draw a circle with a point in the middle and whatever the letter is that's in the center here. That's a way of saying circle P without writing out the word circle. Okay, the radius for this particular circle, you have several segments that can be a radius. We have segment or segments. AP, you can have PB, you can have CP, or you can switch those around and do PA, BP, or you can do CP. Okay, so the diameter is just AB, segment AB. Right here. Okay. So again, this is a chord. It's got, it's a segment whose endpoints are on the circle. A secant is a line that intersects a circle in two points. And then a tangent is a line in the plane of a circle that intersects the circle in exactly one point. Oops. Don't know. Okay. And then the point of tangency, that's the point where the tangent line intersects the circle. In this particular scenario, point T is the point of tangency. Okay. Here you have the common internal tangent. That's just a tangent line that goes in between two circles and it touches the cir each circle in one point, and that would be the point of tangency. Here, the difference is the tangent line is on the outside of the two circles, it's not in between. Okay, um, so if you look at this and you try to figure out what is what, this top line is a tangent line. Okay, from E to F, I know it's kind of hard to see that, that is a chord. Okay. A is your center. CD is your diameter. 
GH is going to be a secant. Okay, and then this segment here, this is just your radius. Commonly known as R. Okay, here we go. A tangent line and the radius of a circle are perpendicular. So if you have a circle, you have a tangent line, that circle's radius will always be perpendicular, okay? And vice versa. If a line is perpendicular to a radius, then it is a tangent line. Okay, so true or false, EF is tangent to circle D. Now we have to do a little bit of math to figure that out. Okay, so I want you to think back um, to triangles. If you have a right triangle, um, if you've got two sides, you can find a third with the Pythagorean theorem. But the Pythagorean theorem only works with right triangles. Okay, so in order to prove that EF is a tangent line, we need to prove that the radius and the tangent line are perpendicular. So you do that by using the Pythagorean theorem, okay? Remember, your C is always across from the right angle. I'm gonna have A is 11 and B is 60. So let's see. If we set this up, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A is 11, so 11 squared plus 60 squared equals 61 squared. When you end up multiplying those out, you get 3,721 on this side, and you get 3,721 on the right side. So that checks out. That means this is in fact perpendicular because this is in fact a right triangle. So yes, it's true. EF is tangent to circle D. Okay. Okay, word problem for you. And this has a little bit more algebra than you're probably used to at this point, but you will be perfectly okay. All right, so I want you to notice this is your radius. Okay, uh, in the question it says, you are standing 14 feet from a water tower. So we are here, you're gonna make a little person, you're there. All right. Um, you're standing 14 feet from a water tower. This big circle is the water tower, okay? The distance from you to a point of tangency on the tower is 28 feet, that is here. Okay, what is the radius of the water tower? Okay, so it's already telling you that this is the point of tangency. That means this has to be a tangent line and this has to be the radius. So that has to be a right angle. Anytime you have a right angle, you have a right triangle. So you can figure out um, what you're missing using the Pythagorean theorem, but you have to be careful here. So I just want to look at this entire side, AC. AC is made up of R and 14. So to put those together to kind of combine them, since we don't know what R is, we're just gonna say R plus 14, okay? So here, this will be my A, this will be my B, and then the R plus 14 is gonna be the C, okay? So if you have A squared plus B squared equals C squared, A is R, we're gonna have R squared, B is 28, so 28 squared equals C squared, which is just the R plus 14, all in parentheses squared. Okay, when you square 728, you get 784. When you FOIL this out, you know you do R times R, that's R squared. R times 14, that's 14R. 14 times R, 
14R. 14 times 14 should give you, let's see, 196. Let's clean this up. Fourteen R and fourteen R added together give you twenty eight R plus one hundred ninety six. Okay. Now I'm gonna pick this R squared. I'm gonna subtract it. It's already positive. I'm gonna subtract it from both sides. Ah, what happens? They both cancel. So you have 784 equals 28R plus 196. Subtract 196 on both sides. You end up getting 588 equals 28R divided by 28. R is going to be 21. So the radius here is 21 feet. Okay. Uh, next, there's a theorem. It says, if two segments from the same exterior point, so this would be the exterior point in this case, if two tangent to, if two segments from the same exterior point are tangent to a circle, then they are congruent. So basically, if you have this, these two segments are congruent. All right, so let's look at an example of this. Directions say AB is tangent to circle C at B. AD is tangent to circle C at D. Okay, so these are two tangent lines and they share this point it's an exterior point outside the circle. So that means these two segments are equivalent. So you can set them equal to each other and find your variable here. Okay, so we're gonna have x squared minus four equals 21. Add four, add four, you get x squared equals 25. Square root, take the square root, x equals five. And that's all you had to do was find x. Okay, on this one, it says find the values of x, y, and z. Um, so I see uh, y and, so a, b, and a, g are both a section of the radius. So y is just 15 because y is a radius. And then d, c, and b, c, share a common external point. So Z is going to be 36. Now how you find X? Well, this is a right triangle. I'm gonna look at the bottom here. I'm gonna say A, B, and C. If you do A squared plus B squared equals C squared, A is 15 squared. Uh, B squared would be 36 squared. C squared is your X squared, what you're trying to find. Uh, so 15 squared plus 36 squared is going to give you 1,521. Take the square root of both sides. You get 39 is X. Okay. Okay, and that was all for day one. Okay, that was basic circles mixed in with some Pythagorean theorem and right triangles. Okay, so the next thing you had to do... Uh, let's talk about arcs and chords, okay. So we're gonna talk a lot about circles, probably more than you want to hear, um, but I'm gonna note that the diameter is the widest part of the circle. or it's the longest chord, okay? So when you think about arcs, 
kind of think about eyebrows, think about this little symbol. That's what I think of anyway. Um, before we talk about arcs, let's talk about central angles because there's a special relationship between arcs and central angles. Okay, so the central angle, this is an example. If it's a central angle, the vertex of that angle is in the center of the circle. Okay, so when you're doing arcs, um, this is the arc. So we're looking at arc BC here for this particular problem. Um, it's part of the part of the circumference of the circle. So a minor arc is less than 180 degrees, and it's going to be noted with two letters, not three. A minor arc is going to have two letters. Okay, so a minor arc is less than 180 degrees. So if you look around this circle and you try to find examples of minor arcs, you can have BC, you can have AD, you can have AB. Um, or you can have DC. All of those are minor arcs. Semicircle, that's just exactly 180 degrees. So an example of that, when you're doing, um, so if you look at this, if we go halfway around the circle, a lot of students are tempted to say, oh, uh, semicircle is AC, no. Um, when you're listing semicircles or larger, you want to use three letters. So, and you might have like something over here. You might have X, Y, I don't know what you have, but you have to have something in the middle. Kind of like when you have angles, let's say this is A, B, C. We could call this angle ABC, we could call this angle B, we could call this angle CBA. You had a, a few options. Kind of the same thing here if you've got two things that happen to be in the middle. So when you're naming this semicircle, it's just going to be arc ABC. If you wanted to go the other way, you could say that's arc ADC. Um, or you can start with C and say, okay, this is CBA. This is CDA. Okay. And then a major arc is going to be more than 180. So right off the bat, I see if we extend the semicircle um, and some people are tempted to say, oh, that's CBAD. No, you only need one letter in the middle. You can pick B, you can pick A, it doesn't matter. Um, arcs are named by their endpoints. Okay, so if it's a major arc, it's greater than 180 degrees. Some examples in this circle would be arc DAC. So DAC. You can have arc DBC. So D, B, C, it's basically the same one. You just picked a different letter for the middle. Um, you can have arc C, A, D. If you go this way, C, A, D. Uh, another example, you can have uh, D, B, C. We've already had that. But you've got several options here. When you're measuring arcs, the arc is the exact same as the central angle. So this central angle is 60 degrees, so this arc DC, this minor arc DC is 60 degrees. This central angle is 20 degrees, so this minor arc is also 20 degrees. Okay, so let's go over a few more things. How many, how many degrees are all the way around the circle? Well, you know that there are 360 degrees all the way around the circle. And you know that halfway around the circle is 180. Uh, and you're gonna use this a lot when we're doing circles, when we're trying to find arc measurements. 
it's similar to segment addition. So if you have this A, B, C, to find A, C, you're gonna add segments A, B and segment B, C together. Okay. Okay, same thing here, arc addition postulate. The measures of an arc formed by two adjacent arcs is the sum of the measure of the two arcs. So, same kind of thing. The pieces make up the whole, and we're going to do a lot of practice with this. Okay, on this question, let's try to find some things. So, MN, that's a minor arc, and that's just 80 degrees. Um, arc MPN, so MPN, that's if you go all the way around. Okay, so we've got to figure out a few things first. This is going to be your diameter. If this is your diameter. This is 180 degrees, and then on the other side, it's also 180, but this part's 80, so this part's 100. Okay, if you go, if you start at M and you end at N, that's going to be 100 plus 180. That gives you 280 degrees. And then P, M, N is just a semicircle, so that's just 180 degrees. Okay. Don't forget about linear pairs and vertical angles. So these are vertical angles, they are the same. Uh, these two angles, these two add to 180, that's a linear pair. Don't forget about those. Okay. Theorem 10.5, if a diameter or radius of a circle is perpendicular to a chord, then the diameter or radius bisects the chord and its arc. Okay, so if you have a radius, not a radius, but yeah, a radius too, but this is a um, diameter, if you have a diameter, and it is perpendicular, meaning a 90 degree angle is created from the two segments together, then um, it bisects that chord. The diameter will bisect. Bisect just means cuts in half. All right. So in this case, if you're trying to find DC, if you know this is a diameter, this is a chord, and they are perpendicular. So these two segments have to be the same. This has to be four. To find the whole thing, DC, that's just eight. All right, another theorem. In the same circle or in congruent circles, two minor arcs are congruent if and only if their corresponding chords are congruent. Okay, so if you have two chords, that are congruent, their arcs must also be congruent, and it works the other way around as well. Okay, so in this one, you have 65 and 85. You're going to have to use that arc addition stuff. You're going to have to use the fact that you know there's 360 degrees in a circle. And here we've accounted for 85 and 65 of those degrees. So if you add them together, you get 210. Okay, so I'm gonna subtract that from 360. That's going to give me, wait, no. I'm so sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. When you add those two, Hold on. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's 150. So when you subtract 150 from 360, you get 210. Sorry, I just got ahead of myself. Um, so 210 makes up this arc and this arc, but they are equivalent, so you can divide 210 by 2. That gives you 105. Next, find the measure of BC. If you've got two chords that are congruent, their intercepted arcs are going to be congruent as well. So here you're just going to set those two expressions equal to each other. 
we have 3x plus 11 equals 2x plus 48. Subtract 2x on both sides. You have x plus 11 equals 48. Subtract 11. x equals 37. Um, BC is here, so you're going to end up doing 2 times 37 plus 48. And that's going to give you 122. Okay. Okay, theorem 10.7, in the same circle or in congruent circles, two chords are congruent if and only if they are equidistant to the center or equidistant. So. If you have two chords like so, A, D, and B, C here, and they are the same distance to the center of that circle, that's what these two tick marks mean, then those chords are going to be congruent. That's how you know that A, D is 8. So like here, you have two chords that are congruent. If the two chords are congruent, they are the same distance to the center. Okay, so we can say 3x equals 7x minus 8. Subtract 7x, subtract 7x. Negative 4x equals negative 8. Divide by negative 4. You get x equals 2. And then it says to find cu. So that's just going to be 3 times 2, which is just 6. Okay. Right. Um, in my presentation for class, I think I said this was a red line, this was a blue line, and they represent chords. Okay. And I drug them over to the circle. I can't really do that on paper here. Um, but I'm saying which one is closer to the center of the circle. So the blue line is going to be around here. The red line, whoop, I didn't mean to hit the camera. The red line is going to be slightly above that. Okay, can you see that the red cord is slightly closer to the center just because it, it's longer? So the diameter. is the longest chord. I think I've already said this. Um, it's the widest part of the circle. Okay. All right. So we just went over this stuff from Monday and Tuesday. Next, we're going to look at what we did Wednesday and then what we did Thursday, if we have time. Okay, so Wednesday, that, um, sorry, that was my desk. Wednesday, we looked at inscribed angles, okay? And for an inscribed angle, it's kind of like a central angle, but not really. Um, it's, it's easy like central angles were, but not, okay. So for an inscribed angle, the vertex is not in the center, it's on the edge of the circle. Okay, and this is its intercepted arc. It's the one that it kind of makes like an ice cream cone with. Anyway, um, okay, so here the relationship is the angle, the inner, the um, inscribed angle is half of its intercepted arc. So this arc is 100 degrees. So that angle is 50 degrees. It's just half of it. Okay, on this one, your angle is 115. So the arc is double that. So 115 times two, that's 230 for 230 degrees. If you're having a hard time with this, just remember the angle is the smaller one. Okay, um, some examples. If we had this, let's zoom in so you can see what's going on. 
If we had this, um, and this is your angle, 23, find your arc. You're just gonna multiply that times two. It's gonna give you 46 degrees. Okay, find angle E. Okay, so if this is 162, angle E is going to be half of that. So take half of 162, it's gonna give you 81 degrees. Okie doke. Another example, example three and four. Uh, you have to do a little bit more work here. Uh, for To find angle R, you need to know what QS is. To know what QS is, you've got to use the fact that you know that all the way around a circle, all of those arcs add up to 360. Okay, we already have 120, 140. Let's add those together. 120 plus 140, that gives you um, 240. No, that gives you 260, my bad. I'm looking at two different things here. Um, and then that's those two. All the way around the circle is 360, subtract those, you get 100. So this arc is 100 degrees. That means angle R is half of it. So angle R is just 50 degrees. Okay, um, be careful here. It says find MP. Okay, if angle P is 30, this n squared angle is 31 degrees, MN is double that, so that's 62. Okay, so to find MP, you're going to use this semicircle, semicircle, PN. PMN, um, and that's 180 degrees, so 180 minus 62 gives you 118, and that is the section up here that you were asked to find. Okay. Um, to find different colored pens for the next little section. It's just easier. Let's use highlighters. That works. Okay, so when you're comparing measures of inscribed angles and their intercepted arcs, sometimes the angles are going to share the arc. When this happens, see all three of these angles are going to end up being the same measure. So let's, I'm going to say they're all Congruent, but let's investigate. Let's look at this first one. I'm going to make it pink. So that's angle C. And angle C is half of the intercepted arc. Half of 60 is 30. Okay, next, we look at angle D. Again, the intercepted arc is 60, so angle D is half of that, which is 30. Okay. Then angle E here, and that's also sharing the 60 degree arc. And this is 30 degrees. So they're all 30. And it helps if you've got uh, colored pencils, crayons, highlighters, so you can focus on each angle individually, because if you just look at this big this circle, there's a lot going on. Okay, so that leads us to this theorem. If two inscribed angles of a circle intercept the same arc, so this one, we've got this angle, with this arc, and then this angle, they have the same arc. If that happens, the angles are the same. Let's do an example. Okay, find each measure. Find the measure of angle N. 
Uh, so that's going to be here. That angle has this intercepted arc, PL or LP. And this angle M also has that arc as its intercepted arc. So that means these two angles are the same. That's 6y minus 1 and 3y plus 8. If those angles are the same, those expressions are the same. Set it up. 6y minus 1 equals 3y plus 8. Add 1, add 1. Uh, subtract 3y, subtract 3y. That's going to be 3y. That cancels out. That cancels out, and that's 9. So y is simply 3. If you know y is 3, you can find n. So it's going to be 3 times 3 plus 8. That's 9 plus 8, which is 17. This is 17 degrees. Okay. Sorry, the camera. Sometimes it gets blurry. Let's put a paper clip so it can focus. All right, next, find angle L. Uh, that's here. Here we go. Here's orange. So angle L has this intercepted arc. And then angle P also has that intercepted arc. So L and P are the same. So you can set it up that way. 5x plus 9 equals 6x. Subtract 5x, x is just 9. If you know x is 9, angle L, you plug that back in, it's going to be 5 times 9 plus 9. And that's 45 plus 9 to give you 54 degrees. Okay. Lastly, uh, well, there's two more things. Um, sometimes you're going to have inscribed polygons. A polygon is just a straight-sided figure. Um, poly just means many, so it's a straight-sided, it's a many-sided figure with uh, straight sides. Okay, so with that being said, sometimes there's, um, sometimes you have a diameter involved as a side length of one of your poly, of the uh, polygon. This is a triangle and AC is a diameter. Okay, if you have the diameter as a side, the inscribed angle will be 90 degrees. Because that means, let's look at the intercepted arc would be here. That's half the circle. So that's 180. Half of 180 is 90. That's why. Okay. So if you have the diameter as a side, the inscribed angle will be 90 degrees. Okay, so here on number nine and number 11, it tells you um, basically this is your diameter. Okay, so the intercepted arc with that inscribed angle is here. No, sorry. I'm looking at it the wrong way. It gives you J, it gives you K. Um, H is going to be the 90 because you're looking here. Okay, this is still my diameter. This is 180, half of 180 is 90. That's a triangle. All angle measures add to 180, um, but you already have half of it. You already have 90 accounted for, so the other two have to add to 90. So 5x minus 2 plus 2x plus 8 equals 90. And that's going to be 7x plus 6 equals 90, subtract 6, you get 7x equals 84, 
y by 7, x is 12. If x is 12, you want to find j. So that's going to be 5 times 12 minus 2. 60 minus 2 is 58. Angle K, that's 2x plus 8, so that's going to be 2 times 12 plus 8, that's 24 plus 8, so that's 32 degrees. Okay, last thing, sometimes you're going to have inscribed um, quadrilaterals, and what you need to know about these is the opposite angles. Add to 180 degrees. Okay, so here, so these are opposite angles, those have to add to 180. So you're going to do 7y plus 11y equals 180. That gives you 18y equals 180. That gives you y equals 10. These are opposite angles. So set those equal to each other. Uh, 3x minus 5 plus 3x plus 5 equals 180. Negative 5, positive 5, they cancel out. 3x and 3x is 6x. So 6x equals 180. x equals 30. Use that information to find angle S and angle R. Angle S is 3x plus 5. So that's going to be... 3 times 30 plus 5, that's going to be 95. Angle R is going to be 11Y. Y is 10, so 11 times 10 is going to give you 110. And those are degrees. Okay, I am going to stop here. I was going to go over Thursday stuff. Um, but this video would be just way too long if I did that. I uh, said so just look for another video um, for Thursday's stuff. I hope this video helps. If you have any questions, please let me know in class. Thank you.